piss alive being alive too, you know. <laughs> we just like air guitar drums and like play like live drums and it's like air guitar and stuff to like kiss and that's kind of like how I got like the fever, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like early kiss and I started playing drums. I wanted to be Peter Chris and then Kiss Alive Two came out and then it was Ace. Like right after that, it was Ace and oh really? I started playing guitar. I never looked back. But I still I've I've done two. Both instruments on off forever. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Level Up Cleveland. And this week we have with us Mr. John Lincoln. Most people may know him as Scooter. He's another Parma guy that's um, kind of came out of that whole Parma scene that we know of so well that spawned all the, especially the metal, some of the big metal bands came out, especially like the late 80s, early, even mid-80s, actually, some of that stuff started and then, Went into the late 80s and even into the 90s with bands like Mystic. They came out of that whole scene. And uh, thanks for coming on, man. Thanks for having me. I got to tell you, um, one of the biggest reasons I think that we wanted you on was because, like, Pat and I talk a lot about how when we're, when we're doing this podcast thing, one of the things that we want to achieve when it's all said and done is that we've kind of taken a snapshot of this individual time in Cleveland and all the music scenes, the scene that's going on, all the bands and musicians that are at it right now. And I don't think you could accurately do that without having you on. I think you're a, like integral part of a lot of things. There's a lot of things you're doing also, aside from the fact that you're a multi musician, a multi instrumental type guy, you know, you don't just play one instrument. You're playing guitar. You also play drums and you, you do them both. Well, you're not like, you know, handicapped on one or the other you could do either or you're one of them kind of guys and not only that but you fly the flag for everybody else in this community you know you're you you back everybody you're supportive of everything you know everybody like i don't think there's another guy we'll ever have on the show who knows as many people as you do and is friends with them all so to have you on here means you know that we're we're this is to show people that there's mo- other people that do other things rather than what you just see and what you right, know right. about. And you're that guy. I think you're one of those guys, oh, one thanks, of those people, man. man. So you, I know you have a lot of stories to tell. I know you, I know you know a lot of things. You, you've, you've done a lot. You go, like I say, you were a part of the whole terror thing, which went on to form bands like Mushroom Head. And, well, we'll get into all that. A lot of different people went through the whole terror thing and stuff. But you were a part of that also. Me and uh, Brian started it. Right, and you were friends with the Schoolers, which you got John Schooler, J.J. Righteous from Mushroom Head. He was also uh, a part of the Unified Culture thing. We'll get into all that, right? Yep. But anyways, right now what you're doing is you're in a band called Fester. I metal am. metal band. Crossover thrash band, I guess. Yeah, yeah, and you're playing drums with them. But you also play guitar, like I said, and you have a plethora of, of equipment. Like I like I because let's just say it like this, you're you're a social media guy. You you take the social media and you have no problem. And basically, what, what I'm talking about as far as you being supportive, you do a lot of it there. You know, a lot of it there. You're backing people. You're always supportive of everybody, man. It's it's really cool. But but you also show on on, on social media. You be like, dude, I have this amp. I had that amp. Wish I still had this one. I got this guitar. You're always changing up, trading, buying, selling. So you got you got all that going on too, right? I mean, that's that's all I have, part I have of a it. Sickness. <laughs> it's it's stupid. It's it, it's not as out of control now as it used to be. But well, like what what inspired you to to do this? Like, well, how did you get into it? I was doing it way before high school, but. As far as, like, all the bands there, like, everybody was, like, really tight-knit, like... Friend-wise? Friend yeah, like, I mean, we had meeting places like Parmatown Mall and, yeah, you know, everybody would get together and 
everybody had visions, you know. Everybody listened to music, so was it all? But yeah, but there, but the scene that kind of came out of Parma was definitely on the harder edge, and definitely oh, yeah. a lot more of the metal type music. It wasn't just music in general; for sure, it was one type basically. I mean, like, and and the thing was, is all that was happening right when that music was all changing and forming. I mean, like, there was a lot of that was all like the infant stages of all that stuff back then in those '80s when the thrash was just kind of like really becoming popular, and you guys were like right at the forefront of all that. A lot of yeah, you there was guys. a lot of punk bands too out of Parma. Like, most of the bands, like everybody in all the bands, are like super close, like super good friends. A lot of bands share the same members. You know, it's like. Oh, Were you guys into the trading cassettes and all that oh, stuff back then? Is that is was that is that a big thing too? Hardcore, like, hardcore. Yeah, look, so that was a lot of things. So you guys would make a demo of of your music or whatever, and you would trade them with other things, and just trade just bands in general, right? Oh, I mean, it was just like because you know a lot of bands. Dude, Some like, of the biggest tape traders, like in the metal scene, like our Parma guys, you know. Yeah, I mean, there's some all over the world, but like I mean, our scene was. It was pretty good, you know? Yeah, and, and that, that, that's another fact. I mean, like, a lot of these guys that came out of the Parma scene became worldwide known metal musicians who be, that not just stayed within the Parma thing, but the metal, you know, you, you bring up Mystic uh, with Roy, and it was uh, Ed Miller. Mm-hmm. Now he's at Sun the Sky was in was in that band. Um, Kenny Easterly was in that band. And they were huge across the sea. And we've brought that up in past episodes, but they were huge overseas in Germany and in and, and Europe and stuff like that. And uh, a lot of bands. I mean, a lot of bands from Cleveland, but that Parma scene, you it's know. It's funny how many uh, Parma bands, like, kind of went national, you know. Oh, yeah. Or at least people in our scene went national. Yeah. Like went I on s- to play with bands like Nunslaughter and Mushroom Head and Mystic and, you know. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, and became huge. I think a lot bigger than people even realize sometimes, you know, because some of the bands, like uh, we had Destructor in here, and they were talking about how big they are overseas, but locally, you know, they they don't, they they're not going to do a thousand people locally, but they can do that over there, you know, like it's and and I think sometimes it's a mindset where people here don't realize how how appreciated these bands are elsewhere, you know what I mean? It's pretty wild stuff. So let's go back. So so. The first band was it was Terror. The first metal band you guys started back in the in high school, or you said you started before high school. You started just playing music before high school. Yeah. Or or I, were you already doing the metal thing? And I all was that? already doing the metal thing. I'm a lot older than those guys, so uh, I actually graduated in '84. Oh. And I went to Berea High for a couple years. I was living in Brook Park with my mom, and uh, I lived in. Brook Park for about 10 years, and I was already, like, in the metal, punk, a lot of punk big time back then, like, early 80s, like, you know, 82, 83, and then I would split households. I live with my mom in Brook Park, and then on the weekends, I'd come back to Parma with my grandparents. Oh. So, like... So you're getting the best because the part because there was a whole yeah that's a, Brook Park's a whole nother scene that we could get into, but we won't, but... That metal scene <laughs> is, like, and the guys... From the Brook Park scene and metal scene, you know, everybody's good friends there, too, you know? Yeah. But, yeah, I started pretty much when I lived in Brook Park, trading tapes, uh, going to concerts. Uh, we used to go to concerts and bootleg concerts. Oh, yeah? You used yeah. to tape them, sneak, uh, in, sneak in, recording stuff? And... Most, most of all the great live stuff you would hear on college radio, my buddy Mark Jones and me, and uh, Ken Kitt, you know who Ken Kitt yeah. is? Mm-hmm. Uh, us three were, like, instrumental for, like, bootlegging shows and, like, taking them up to WCSB, UJC, RUW, and, like, giving them to our DJ friends and getting the, you know. Yeah, because you'd hear, like, even Bill Peters, he'd always pull out some live stuff. Oh, or, yeah. you know, 90% of anything you heard live back then, uh, metal or punk, was usually bootlegged by those two guys, and I was always with Mark and Ken back then. We used to hang out a lot and go to shows. That's all we did, just go to shows, you know? Yeah. Like five, six days a week. Like It was like a job? I would just go to shows even if I didn't like the band, just to go and mingle and make contacts. And So a lot of times if you thought people were there at the show that you would want to see, that was good enough, not just the band that was actually oh, yeah. playing. I mean, back then there was so many bands on a bill at one time. I mean, you used to do, like do the '80s shows, like at like at the Variety Theater. There'd be like 
there'd be like a a, a punk showcase. There'd be like five or six, seven bands. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah. And you go there and you see all your favorite bands. You know, it's like. So who was your favorite bands early on? Like before, even before high school, you said you were like, what were you jamming? Like what's your, what are you listening to? At I that was point? in a lot of the new wave British heavy metal bands. Oh really? I was a huge UFO, Scorpions, Saxon, uh, Riot. Uh, you know, all those kind of type bands, you know, Michael Shanker. That's kind of like what I cut my teeth early on. Iron Maiden, of So course. this is like before the Metallica even comes out and any oh, like yeah. that stuff. The thrash hasn't even really made the scene yet. No. So I, what, what, so when, when you do first start hearing stuff like, like the Metallica stuff. So did you hear Kill 'Em All when Kill 'Em All came out? I mean, was that, was that like, or was it, how did that happen? For me, uh, Ken Kitt was instrumental for bringing Metallica here back in the old days. During, like, the demo days and then the Kill 'Em All days, uh, Ken was friends with the band early on. And, uh, you know, Ken always goes out of town to see shows. And I think he's seen them, like, at maybe Brooklyn Lemores or something, you know. And uh, those early Metallica shows on the Kill 'Em All tour, Ken was friends with those guys, you know. And he was instrumental for bringing them here to Cleveland. But the first time I heard Metallica, like No Life to Leather demo and Kill 'Em All, Ken was pretty much responsible. So that's what he was turning you on to a bunch of this yeah. stuff. It, so, it Ken and my buddy Mark were, like I said, both the bootleg guys, you know. So they were instrumental to turning me on a lot of, like, you know, the early, you know, like stuff like Metallica and stuff like that. The, thr know? the thrash stuff. Yeah. Now, at this point, are you already playing? Are you already doing music? Are I was you playing? playing guitar, yeah. But I was, so you already played guitar. That's what yeah, you started with? I started with? playing guitar when I was seven. And actually, I think a couple months before I started playing guitar, I was already playing drums for about five or six months. I started drums first, then I switched to guitar. Oh. So then, so, so, and then what happens? You just, like, eventually, like, through the years after that, you just play both, and then event you gradually get better and better? Or how do you, how do you get to the point where you can do both like you can now? I mean, like, just, just over the, a long course, did you go crazy and learn these things? Well, back then when I I started playing drums, uh, geez, back in like seventy eight, seventy nine, wow. we would set up, we would like imitate Kiss. I was gonna say Peter Chris when you said seventy eight, seventy nine. I'm like, my, everybody's gonna my say drum Kiss. Set up. I'm, my dad used to have this gigantic table in the basement when we lived in Middle Bird Heights, and uh, we'd set, set my drums up there, put Christmas lights on, just like Kiss Alive, being alive too, you know. <laughs> We'd just, like, air guitar drums and, like, play, like, live drums and just, like, air guitar and stuff to, like, kiss. And that's kind of, like, how I got, like, the fever, you know? Yeah, yeah, just, yeah, yeah. Know, like, early kiss. And I started playing drums. I wanted to be Peter Chris. And then Kiss Alive 2 came out. And then it was Ace. Like, right after that, it was Ace. And oh, really? I started playing guitar. I never looked back. But I still, I've, I've done two, both instruments, on, off, forever. Yeah, so it doesn't matter. You can and, and you're comfortable either or. And how do you decide? Like, is it like is it like what the band needs? Is that how you like? Well, this one needs a drummer, so I'll play drums for you guys. Actually, this... it's like whoever wants to play. Me, I'm like one of those people that like I just like to play music. I don't. I don't care which instrument I play. I'll play drums or I'll play guitar. Yeah, I just love to play. You don't even have a preference on those two. Do you? Do you have a preference? I, I'm naturally a guitar player. If yeah. you ask anybody, everyone's like, "Yeah, Scooter plays guitar." Like, I do, but I can play drums. You know. Yeah, and faster. Like I said, you play drums. I'm not a technical drummer by any means. I'm like basic meat and potato, one foot blast guy. You know, like no fancy double bass. No, not a big fill guy. I'm just the in-the-pocket guy, you know. Yeah, well, that's the most important thing, though. If you can stay in the pocket, then that's all yeah, that. I mean, it's I mean, not hard. I mean. It's hard for some people. Some people get bored and, like, want to overplay, I should say, you know. I've never been that guy. I've always been the kind of whatever the song needs, you know what I mean. And I, I guess I never really overplayed because I'm not really. I wouldn't say I'm a great drummer, but I'm not a horrible drummer, you know. Right, 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 Definitely right. Definitely a better guitar player for sure. So how does uh, how do you uh, hook up with these guys? What's the what's the story of Fester? Oh, Fester. Yeah. Oh, geez. Uh, I've gee, I've known Vince uh, since the early '90s, like real early '90s, and uh, me and Vince were in a couple. Now Vince other is bands. who? The, he's the he's the singer. Yeah, Vince is a singer and bass player. Bass player, yeah. And uh, 
<clears throat> me and Vince were in a couple other bands. We were in a band called Puppet Regime, which was me, Vince, Chris Pello, Eric Baker, and and myself. And then that split up. And then we formed Syphilis Diller. Oh, yeah, Syphilis Diller. And that Diller. was me, Eric Baker, Vince, of course, again, uh, Rich Chris. I said Eric Baker. And, uh, yeah. It's Speaking of Syphilis Diller, I still think it's the greatest name I've ever heard. It was of a band. cool name. It's the greatest name. I can't take credit for that. It wasn't my. Yeah, how, who came up with that name? Uh, Rich Chris, Rip and Rich. Brilliant. What a great name that was. It's one of the best names I ever heard. It's hilarious. Yeah, when I first heard it, I was like. And then when you hear Syphilis Diller, you're like, yes, that's exactly what they're supposed to sound like. The music music did fit the name. Oh, It was was a fun band. I wish it wouldn't have been imploded the way it did, but we had a lot of fun with it. Now, now like, you you don't do any much, like, a cover type thing really like that's not your gig really like to go into cover bands playing other people's music usually when you're involved in music you're writing your yeah, own stuff. mostly all original stuff yeah yeah, yeah that's we a- do a few covers i mean we did covers in syphilis we did covers in puppet regime but I mean, if we do covers most of the covers we do are like really like freaking like deep tracks you know like i think in uh puppet regime we did a dr no cover um, Eagle Maniac, which is a deep cut. Um, Syphilis Diller, I mean, we did like a Joy Division cover. We brought that Dr. No cover over to that band. Um, so Fest- now, Fester, we d- we're not afraid to do covers. We had a lot, lot of covers with our originals. So you guys just take uh, certain songs and then just Festerize them, I guess, as you would say, right? Pretty like, much, I yeah. mean. Or yeah. back then it was whatever band you were in. Yeah, I mean, Vince's... Vince is pretty much responsible for, like, picking the covers that we do. I'm like, hey, he's like, hey, what do you guys think about this, doing this song? I'm like, yeah, man, you know. We just make it ours and just metal it up, you know. Yeah, man. Vic Novak's not, like, another name. Um, He he was first drummer for Unified also. We We stole Vic from a Judas Priest tribute band. Really? Yeah. Is he a Parma guy too, right? I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, Seven Hills, basically. That, yeah. But yeah, Parma. yeah, yeah. His sister Nikki. Yep. You know, you know, you know Nikki. Yeah, she's, Nikki rules. Yeah, she's my girlfriend. Is one of her best friends. So they talk constantly, everything, yeah. and it's funny because she sent me a picture of you when you were in high school. <laughs> oh yeah. So I told her you were going to be on, and she's like, "Oh, check this out," and I sent it to you. Remember? That was a hotel picture yeah. when uh, I think we played Columbus. I think the Newport. I think it was with Sabotage. That sh- I think it was from Sabotage show. We played with Sabotage. Dude, in, in, in all honesty, if, if there was an award given out for somebody who has changed the least looks-wise since high school, I mean, hands down, you won that award. I mean, Everybody always says that. I don't know. <laughs> if you look at my hair, it's mostly gray now, bud. Well, I mean, it's we all have a my, little. That's all. my kids, but. Yeah, well, that's all. We all have a little bit of that. But other than that, man. I get that a lot. You I, stayed the same, man. It's amazing. That's I've good. i fortunate, I guess. Hell I yeah, dude. I saw that picture, and I was like. <laughs> it's I'm like almost 57 Photoshop. and still have a full head of hair, so I'm not complaining. Anymore. Hell no, man. So what was going on with the terror thing? How, how, give me a little bit inside. Do you remember a lot of the, the days? I mean, that's a long time yeah, ago, and that was a lot of brain cells. I remember ago, a lot of it. Yeah. So, so who starts all that? How does how does it start? Um, me and Brian Sakula started Terror. I came up with the name. <sighs> it was like one of those names, like you used to, like if you were going to start a band. Like I always thought the name Terror was cool. Yeah. And, like, I used to write it on everything in school. I'd write it all over. Well, and people got to remember, too, at this point, there's not a lot of names. Like, there's not, there hasn't been a shitload of bands. Like, now there's a zillion bands already been formed with every name taken. It wasn't back then, you yeah, know? Yeah, back then. There, you had a lot more, a lot more to choose, choose from. Choose from, right. Yeah. yeah. But I used to write it everywhere. And, I don't know, me and Brian just, like, Brian's, like, start a band. Like, yeah, let's start a band, you know? I'm like, I got a good name, you know, Terror, you know? And, uh. It's stuck, man. But, yeah, that was early on. It was me and Brian. Um, we had Mark Sherman on guitar. I sang back then. I didn't play guitar. I didn't play drums. Um, so it was me, Brian, uh, Mark Sherman on guitar. He lived in, like, Valley City. Um, I forget who we had on drums then. 
Tara's been through a lot of drummers. Yeah, right. That's a probably spinal a, tab if, thing. If right? anything's foggy, it's like the drummer part. Brian could probably tell you better than me. But uh, well, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take a quick break while you think about the drummer. When we come back, we're gonna start right there and we'll freaking we'll go from there. Cool. All right. Yep. When we come back, we sit here with Scooter. A couple of minutes. <laughs> Hello Cleveland, I am ZM Delgado, author of the Rust Belt Rock Review at ZachOlander.com and this is your weekend concert calendar update. First on our agenda, Friday the 28th at the 5 o'clock lounge, it's Brain Itch with supporting act Gale and more bands to be announced. Second up, Saturday the 29th at No Class, it's Spider with support from Hellkite and Immoral Rope. Finally, Sunday the 30th at the Foundry, it's Chemists with support from Conjurer and Wake. So there you have it, Cleveland. you got three shows on your weekend agenda. Hope to see you at least one of them. Until next time, rock on Rust Belt. Hi everybody, it's DJ Terry from the Homegrown Hit Show on 216 to Beat Radio. Here to tell you about a great show happening on Friday, April 28th. It's Fatback Mango, and they're at the Menor Harbor Yacht Club in Menor on the Lake. The party starts at 6.30, so be there. Should be a great show. Whatever you do, keep partying, keep supporting local music, and check me out on Monday nights at 7 p.m. on 216 to Beat Radio. This is DJ Terry, and I'm out. And we are back with John Scooter Linky, and we were just talking a little bit about the terrorist beginnings and, and some of the different members that have been in there and stuff. And A lot of members. Yeah, I like to bring these guys up. Like I said, this, I think this was the start of something that actually turned into a lot of other things down the road. Uh, a lot of people spawned from this thing and, and, and went elsewhere. Um, but we were just talking about some of the different guys that were in there. Um, one of the guys that were on our show that – was in terror also, I believe, it was Craig Martini. Yes, he was. Yeah, before the, before the unified thing, that's he he he's joined terror. Yeah. How did you guys get? How do you guys get a Craig? And at the time, what was Craig like at the time? Oh, Craig was awesome. I mean, I think the whole thing of getting Craig in the band was Craig by then was already a, a killer bass player. Um, forget how we met the Martini brothers. I think either through Billy Morris or you know. Zooters, yeah. one of them. Oh, one of them, you know. So you're 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 with the you know Billy and you know the Zooters at this time also. Oh yeah, I know all those cats. Yeah. So let me ask you the the one question I really want to ask you is how how do you exactly meet all these people that you've you I mean you know a lot of people, and I mean you know not just like a certain group but you know all everyone from every from the guys that were big in the seventies and eighties all the way up till now. I mean, like, and you know everybody. Like, I'm a do social you butterfly, them? I guess. I don't know. Everybody <laughs> yeah. always says that. Like, Scooter, you know fucking everybody. You like, do, dude. It's amazing. I do. Uh, my girlfriend's like, man, you know everybody. Everyone. Walk through the store. I'll walk through Walmart. Like, Scooter, what's up? Like, Everywhere yeah. we go, everybody fucking knows you. How's well, that happen? Yeah, how does that happen? I don't know. I you just, don't, you've never really thought about it? I guess I'm a friendly dude, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> I guess. I mean, well, you are. You know, um... When 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 Pat and I talked about getting you on here, Pat was like, Scooter's a cool dude, man, super cool dude. And I'm like, oh, you know him? And he's like, yeah, dude. He's like, when he was in Triple Threat uh, with Chris, he said, you guys, he said he needed a place to jam. He goes, dude, we had to practice. We had to, we had to get his jam in, da 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 And Scooter was like, well, you can come to my house and, and jam. Oh, and they're yeah, like, man. well, we can't because we got, you know, got our equipment. He's like, oh, I got everything. I do. <laughs> just come on over, and you, guys, and you can just play with – with my you know, on my stuff and yeah, you let you let I've them. Always been like that, man. That's what I. But yeah, but see, okay, that's why you have. That's why everybody's your friend because uh, you're so that you're that guy where where you. Can, a lot of people are like, oh yeah, I can't play on my shit. Fucking, you ain't playing my guitar. 
I don't care. I've never cared, dude. Yeah. If to no one's playing on stuff. it, it's just sitting there. It, it's, it's stuff. Yeah. But I, but but I think that that kind of sets you apart in some ways. I mean, Pat remembered that just like that, you know. Yeah. You, that sticks in people's mind. Well, that it wasn't always that, like you've that. You've done that I mean, for I'd, them. Growing up, I didn't really have a lot of, you know, cool guitars and amps and, you know, it shit. I don't late 20s, early 30s, I start getting decent gear. I mean, I always had some my decent gear, but not like the shit I've had in the last, you know, yeah. 20 years. You know? Yeah, you seek it out. And like I said, you'll do a lot of trading you and whatever what? it I, takes. I, you know, it's funny. I have people from, like, some of, like, the biggest bands in town, like, calling me for gear. Hey, Scooter, I'm looking for this. Can you track it down? Like, yeah, Really? I'll, I'll make it happen. Really? So have you have you become that also where you have, like, you I'm know the, all I, the avenues? I and guess you... I'm the go-to guy if you need, like, some kind of equipment piece of gear a pedal a guitar do, do you loan out your stuff to people sometimes i like, don't really per se loan out my stuff but like if you're looking for something like hey scoot i'm looking for you know this pedal i'll track it down for you i'll find the best possible price you know i'll ask you hey brian what's your you know what's yeah. your price range i'll do the homework you know people are like dude why would you do that for somebody why would you take your time i mean yeah why do you I, don't know. Sure. I was that guy before, you know, I didn't, I didn't know anybody back then. I didn't, you know, I didn't know where to go to acquire the gear. I mean, I knew where to go, but like it was, I couldn't afford it, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. But, you know, I don't know, this is something I like to do. I like the hunt of like just going on these quests, like to find a piece of gear, you know, it's, oh yeah, it's just, it's as fun as playing to be honest. I mean, I love it. Do you have the whole setup in like your basement or something? Oh, is that yeah. what you got? So you got the we've whole. Been, we've been jamming at my house. Uh, for people that don't know, the house I live in now is a house I grew up in since I was a kid. Oh, really? It was my grandparents' house. Um, oh, so this has been passed on now for. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I've lived in the same house for 56 years. So you've been able to kind of like etch yourself into this place in a way. So you got like, like this has got a lot of you now. It's, it's... Everybody who we've been talking about, like, all these bands and all our Parma friends and Brook Park friends, everybody's been over to my grandparents' house. Like, either when we were kids before we played until we played, we either jam there or everybody's come to buy a piece of gear out of the basement or yeah, right. Everybody pick up knows. a piece of gear. Yeah, so, yeah. So, after Terror, first of all, what happens with Terror? How do you, when do you leave Terror? Um, I wasn't really in Terror that long. I think I was in Terror for about a year, year and a half. Back then I sang, um, you know, you had Brian and John, of course, the brothers. Brian's always been the brainchild of terror. I mean, that's Brian's baby. I mean, that's just, he writes all the music. He writes all the lyrics. Back then I wrote the lyrics, like the early stuff. And probably, there's probably not one song left that, like, we do from, like, my era. Oh, I yeah. mean, the band's progressed so much, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah it yeah. went from being, like, a... The primitive beginnings of like thrash metal, yeah. you know what I mean. And then Brian took it in that good tech, technical, de you know, thrash yeah. metal. I mean, Brian's just he's well. Just it's going to progress, you know. As, yeah, as, as, as the musicians especially get better too, then you're going to your music's going to. I've always liked that real barbaric raw, and you know, Brian always set his his expectations for higher, which is cool, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Brian always like made the band better. Always, I mean. From release to release, it always got better. The recordings got better. I mean, the early days when we were recording stuff, Billy Morris was kind enough to take us underneath his wing. And, uh, you know, we used to do a lot of running, a lot of sound for Billy back in the day at his clubs. And uh, Billy would pay us, like, in studio time. We'd go there, and Brian would, you know, engineer stuff, and we record a demo there. A lot of those early Terra demos were all, a lot of them were done at, Billy Morris's studio. Really? When he lived in Columbia Station, yeah, back in the day. So really? Billy's pretty much instrumental for, like, you know, giving us a place where we can record. And then, you know, that's where Brian kind of honed his recording skills, you know, at Billy's. And then from there, we just, the older we got, the smarter we got, he started buying equipment. And Brian started recording a lot. Of, a lot of stuff was recorded at my house. Uh, in the basement, I used to have a full studio in my basement. Oh, really? You I just... still have a semi studio, but I don't have a sound card anymore. Uh, it's kind of been dismantled, you know. But the rehearsal spot's still there, you know. Do you guys still play there? 
I mean, does, uh, do, yeah. does the band still play there? The the Killers still play there. Fester plays over at Jocko's house over in uh, Tremont. Oh, okay. We practice at Jocko's, you know. So so. After so after terror, do you do you continue to play though? I mean, do oh you, yeah, yeah. So what are you I doing? Mean, I didn't I didn't leave like out of sour note. Or and you were still friends like with all the guys from terror still. Uh, you never yeah. like, like best friends, basically, right? Brothers. It's, yeah. So you you just weren't playing in the band anymore. Brian but... Sakula is my absolute best friend in the whole world. He's, okay. I yeah, mean, when we, we seen you when we we ran we ran into you down at that Geno's thing, you were yeah. with Brian. Yeah, I love yeah. Brian. I mean. I'll be honest, like, I was in the music before I met those guys, and I was already doing tape trading, and I was already playing music, but not, like, not anything band-wise until I met Brian. But, like, I'll be honest, like, I have Brian the thankful, to be thankful for, like, a lot of the stuff that I, I started, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we put together together. That's like, you know. Is he, would you say Brian was kind of like influential early on to help you get like yeah, motivated mean, to do a lot of this stuff? Did you guys kind of like it was? Yeah, Brian. Brian's always been like Brian is like kind of a genius when it comes to music. I mean, he's one of those people he can hear anything, figure it out. Um, I mean, when it comes to recording songs and making music. I mean, Brian probably throws away more killer riffs than I've ever wrote. You know what I mean? it's, <laughs> yeah, right. He's just awesome. Him and John have always been awesome. Yeah, right. You know, when, when I met them, um, I met the Sakulas through a friend of mine, Metal Joe. He was from Florida. He was friends with the guys in Death and Obituary and all oh. those guys. And he took me over to Sakula's house back in, like, I don't know, 83, 84. And, like, I met him when... Me and Brian and John just hit it off, and we've been in, you know, we've been yeah. together ever since. Yeah, 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 yeah. I yeah. started my musical journey with Brian, and hopefully I'll end with it, you know. It'll yeah, come cool. full circle. Hell yeah, man, it's cool. And they, and like I said, these guys, you know, the Sakulas are, or should be, known, well-known in this area because they've brought a lot of, they've, they're have they responsible for a lot of the great music oh, yeah. that came out of here. A for lot. sure. Both of them. Because because uh, when we ask Hatrix about like who was the who was the guy that you know threw the mushroom head thing that you really didn't like to write who thought you and he said JJ he was like dude the guy wrote the cool stuff you know he wrote he 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 would write all kind he, he was like you never knew what it was gonna be I said he's mm-hmm. like he's like he would just come up with the most yeah the Sakula brothers are I mean it's for like bands like at Parma High and stuff there was like a lot of musicians in Parma High. And there are a lot of good musicians came out of our Parma High, like guitar players and, you know, drummers, singers. But, like, to me, I, like, gravitated towards, like, you know, them. It's like, you know, when you find that person that's, like, your kindred spirit. And like, yeah. That's who I wanted to play music with. And, you know, like I said, like, when I left Terra, it wasn't because, you know, we had a falling out or nothing. And me and Brian are brothers. We, we, we argue. Like, yeah, you're going to have, like, those weird little fallouts and then it, back it, ends. It, and It was never nothing like that when I left. I just, oh. you know, I always wanted to play more underground, sloppy, freaking evil, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Shit like that. And, you know, Brian's, like, always kept the band progressing and, and it just sounding awesome, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. So I just always, still to this day, support. I support everything he does, man. It's just, you know. So as you're, as you're supporting all the stuff and you're kind of like cruising through and you're kind of like living the whole rock star lifestyle. Right. I mean, at this point, like what would, what's your life like through those, like your twenties and your thirties where you're, where you're, you're doing this stuff still. Right. I mean, like, was that what you did? Was that what you, was it, was that, was that, was that my life you, was chaos. Was it that 20s. what it was? Yeah. I'm like, That's what was like, it? Were you still doing a lot of music? And were oh you yeah, I've never stopped. never stopped. So no, you were all this, this. The music scene was always like you're the forefront for you. That's what you were a part of. I'm one of those people. Like, I don't know. My girlfriend always like, oh, you don't like to be alone. I don't. It's like that with music. If I if I'm not doing something and staying relevant, I mean, it's like people are like, well, why do you do so many jam nights? Because when I'm not doing something in a band setting, I keep my chops up. It, Helps me keep my chops up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For I sure. mean, I don't care what I do. I mean, I, I'll play any style of music. I mean, I just like to play. And when I'm not playing, it just it just don't feel right, you know. I just 
But I mean, like, what are you doing, like, at this point? Like, in the, are you, are you, are you? I was you, out of my control. Are you drinking school. a lot? Like, a lot of drinking, I a lot of party? I never really drank a lot in my early 20s. Back then, I used to smoke a lot of weed. Yeah, so you're just partying and doing some drugs, that kind of thing. Yeah, smoking weed and, you know, eating acid. <laughs> back then, that we used to like the trip back in the 80s. Man. Oh, so that's, that's, that's what that's what we did, you know? So, yeah, and then, absolutely. So, so, but I guess what I'm saying, though, is, like, so you're like, is you, you're living this life, you're living this life, you're living this life. At some point, like you've definitely chilled out a lot, and recently you're not. Like, what chills you out? How, what happens to you where you're kind of like, all right, I got to reel this in a little bit. Um, it took me a while to chill out, actually. Like, I mean, I was doing something musical like almost every day of the week. I mean. If I wasn't playing in a band, I was doing jam nights. If I wasn't doing jam nights, I was recording. I was hooking up with, like, other Parma friends that were in bands and helping them with their bands and doing stuff with them and supporting them. Was, I just always had it around me. I don't think I really slowed down until um, I got with my current girlfriend now, Amber. You know, she had a couple kids. She's from Tennessee, you know. I hooked up with her and... Kind of changed kind of you a little slowed. bit. Well, people start dying, you know. My 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 mom passed. My dad passed, and like, no matter how ever, how crazy everything was around me musically, I mean, everything was like a whirlwind. It like never stopped. You start losing family members. Everyone's getting old around you. You keep doing the same shit you're doing, and around you, like your parents are getting older. Your grandparents are getting older. Once people start dying, man, it's like, you know what I'm saying. You start, what, realization well, sets I, I in? I start like, you know what, I've been doing this for so long, and I'm not going to stop, but I'm going to take it down a couple notches and try to get grounded. I just, you know, I was out of control, man. Like, you know, <laughs> not in a bad way. I mean, I was never a drug addict. I was never an alcoholic. No, I but mean, you weren't, but what you're saying is, is you didn't have like a, that buckled down, I'm just going to no. go out and make a million dollars. You know, and I, try- I never, I mean, I worked regular jobs. And uh, if I work a regular job, I worked a lot of restaurants growing up. I was, like, always cooked. I'm a big cooking guy. I love to cook. If you watch my posts in the summer, all I do is grill, listen to metal, and drink beer, and play (laughs) guitar. That's all I do. That's great, man. It's fun. Everyone's like, dude, every time Scooter posts a picture, it's always food or guitars, you know. That's what I do, you know. It's like what I do in my downtime. I, like, cook and Hang out, do the home life thing. So you but, like this? You like this life a lot that like you got going on now a little bit, where where you have that kind of like where you're settled down a little more. You have some like because because I know you really like the kids too, right? I mean, like oh yeah, like that's been a di- and I, that's I, a big difference. I, for I you, complain right? if you ask my girlfriend, she probably thinks like the kids ruin my life, like because you know when you get mad or something, you have a disagreement, and everybody's kids are horrible at yeah. one time. My kids are, like, teenagers now. I mean, when they moved in with me after my grandfather died, um, they were young. So they were pretty young. I wasn't used to having, you know, young kids around. Like, I kind of had to, like, change how I was living. Like, I couldn't be rock and roll scooter, like, 247. Like, yeah, right. I had to slow it down. Yeah, know? right. It kind of forced you to do it. You know, Amber's like, well, I'm not doing what you used to be. I would never let it get to where I couldn't do what I used yeah. to. I just do it at a different scale. Yeah. But it's it's cool because after my grandfather passed, that was my last living relative. I mean, I worked shit jobs. I I, I played for shit money, you know. It's like none of these bands make any money, you know what I mean? If you're in a band and, like, you're looking to, like, make a paycheck, it's – unless you're in, like, a cool cover band and, like, you're making good cash. Very hard to every, make. Everything money. I've done has just been – there's no money in it. And we play all originals. I don't play covers. Yeah, I'm right. a lazy guitar player. The last thing I want to do is sit there and learn something note for note. <laughs> Somebody else's I, I get I get note. the chords right, and I get it close, and there it is. You know what I mean? And, you know, there's a difference between cover band and tribute band. Oh. If you're in a cover band, you get close. If you're in a tribute band, then you got to be no for nothing. Exactly. You got, you, you, I'm lazy, so I always like to play original. You're not going to do either. You're gonna, you want to play some covers yeah. and an original I play four-chord rock and roll, man. It ain't nothing fancy. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. I, I blast a lot of scales off a thousand miles an hour and fast, and everyone's like, ah. Like. Which is which 
to go on to the next thing, which is perfect for what you're kind of doing now a little more, aside from like the fester thing, is you're doing these jam nights and you're going to like other people's jam nights and you do a lot of this and you do a lot of promoting jam nights. And There's a reason why I started doing the jam nights. Like for a little while there, like, you know, when you go to a lot of concerts and you see a lot of people play, like people you admire, you're like, oh, this guy's a great guitar player. You know, I wish I could play like that, you know. It's like... I was always like kind of pigeonholed as like a death metal guitar player, a thrash guitar player, and then uh, I started going a uh, uh, couple open mic nights with my drummer Rick, and uh, he was like, "Let's go check out these jam nights," you know. I'm like, uh, watch a pe- bunch of people hack through a bu- like amateur hour, watching people. It can be hack through a bunch of covers. It can but you know be. what? It was the greatest thing I ever did. Honest to God, I met some of my th- most dearest friends at the jam nights. And I actually learned how to play guitar at jam nights. I wasn't just a sloppy frickin' death metal guitar player, a thrash metal guitar player. I mean, I had some of the greatest teachers, Butch Armstrong, Alan Green. I mean, there's just a whole slew of them. I mean, you get so many killer musicians coming through these things. And and not even just, like, the big names like Butch and Alan, but, like, I mean, there are, like, a lot of local guys that are, like, in a lot of these cover bands. And, dude, these guys are fucking amazing guitar players, amazing musicians. Yeah, I saw you, I saw you were playing with uh, Brian Allen Hager uh, not long ago, and he was just on the show. Actually, right before your segment aired with Brian, that Sunday before we were at the pit stop jam night, Brian showed up. Yeah, I sent him an invite. I'm like, dude, you gotta come up. And he's from out that direction too. I think yeah, he's Brian a, lives right up the hill. He lives in. He seven was Seven Hills, Hills but I mean, Seven yeah. Hills Parma is very yeah. they're very intertwined. Well, actually, Brian was a Parma guy, and we got married. You know, he moved up the hill, but. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> right. I but painted I'm, his dad's house before they sold it. Oh yeah, well yeah. that's what that's one of the things you do. You're a painter. You do I a am, lot of painting. I am a painter by trade. Do yeah. a lot of. Do you just do a lot of jobs? You'll take on a lot of uh, crazy stuff, and you just you're just that's one of those guys. Thing. I got tired of working for restaurants. It's like back then, like like if we'd go do like a mini tour or something, tour around, like you'd have to request time off. You know. Yeah. Right. And I worked at one restaurant for years. Um, over in Middlebury Heights, um, lady was real cool, little European lady. You know, we back then, me and Sakul, we we'd go out tour a lot. We go sometimes we go out with our friends in Incantation. We go out with like different bands, or you know, Tara would do shows on the weekends. We'd go out of town. You know, so like you always had to ask for permission off. You know? Yeah, right. For your so employer. the older I got, like I was like, well, the only thing I really know how to do is cook, play guitar, and drums, and and sing. Like, I can't really do much else. Like, but, like, I always painted. Like, when I was younger, I lived in an apartment building, and I worked for um, the maintenance guy there. I would help him, and I learned how to paint and do handyman stuff, you know. Yeah. So I'm like, you know what? Why don't I paint, you know? Yeah. And J.J. was a painter. Oh. So cool. John, that was John's trade, too. John was an awesome painter. Oh, really? Very good painter. So he did that when he wasn't mushroom head. Oh, he did it the whole time he was in mushroom head. He oh, painted. did he John really? John painted up till he passed. Yeah. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. So he continued that all the way through. He had. A, did he have his own business? Yeah, he did. Oh, yeah. no kidding. Yeah. I did not know that. Oh yeah, he painted their house now that Brian and Alice live in. Uh, I mean, John's painted everything. I would go on a few jobs with John and paint. You know. Yeah. He used to work with uh, one of our friends, Jim Galecka, the Galecka Brothers. They they're another painting. Painting kids from Parma, you know, brothers that they they painted, you know. John what what, is, what do you yeah. think it is about the, the all, all the Parma guys? How they seems like you guys stay in touch decades down the road, like and it's not just it's, it's, Parma's it's, like a big city. Yeah, it's like you guys are like a bonded. It's like what they say it's like one of the biggest suburbs. Of oh, like, one know, of the biggest cities. Period. period yeah. Not, yeah, one of the biggest population was. I don't know. It, I look at it this way. Our group. Um, Our yeah. group is just like it's 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 strange because it's like everybody's so n- tight knit. I mean, even after high school and even be- you know before. Yeah, but that, exactly what I'm saying. Why do you, why why do you think Parma? These I mean, like everybody's still in touch. A lot of people still stay in touch. Like you you can rattle off. Well, that guy's now in New Jersey, and that guy's. I mean, you guys you know oh, even yeah, the yeah. ones that have moved away, you know where they're at. But it, it seems like that's a lot of people have moved away too. And yeah, and everybody's they, still tight. Yeah. Yeah, it's wild, huh? Yeah. So, so, are you still doing the 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 jam nights? You're doing those frequently now. I mean, do um, you do more than not like as frequently as I'd like. <laughs> I mean, 
we do uh, the Parma Pit Stop Jam, which is not my jam. It's my bass player, Terry's, you know, Terry. Yeah. Um, those guys do it with our friend Paula. And uh, and what night you say that is? Uh, it's it's usually on a Sunday night, but it's like uh, once a month now. Oh. You know, in the winter, it's kind of hard to like everybody every Sunday. So yeah. they, they do it once a month, you know. And what other ones do you do and are you involved in? Um, I mean, are you, are that's you... it really actually from now on just other than doing like Stone Cold Killers and Fester. And uh, I'll probably start doing the new Sand Trap Jam by Butch Armstrong took over. I'll probably start doing that with going to there and doing that, supporting Butch. I like to support my friends, you know. It's like I like to go. Oh, like yeah. I said, when I'm not doing nothing, like Fester, we've been on hiatus for, um, I think since right before Christmas, I think was our last show. We did that Maple Grove show was our last show. Oh, that was the last one you guys yeah, have done? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We took off. Uh, Vince, you know, he, he bowls and stuff in the winter. He's got grandkids. Work's real busy for him. Um, Jocko works a lot, and uh, Jocko wound up buying some property, like, over the summer, like, way out in the sticks, and he's been fixing that up. So, you know, we're like a band that, like, we don't need to really practice every week. We can go, like, months without practicing, and as soon as we get to the spot, we're like right where we left off. That's, that's I mean, we've, we're all pro enough. We've been doing it long enough. Where that's how it works out for us, you know. But we're gonna start here in the next week or two. Fester start up again. I mean, so I, you're I, gonna be gigging out this summer. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. And we're gonna record some new stuff too. Um, we were talking about it like before the last show, recording stuff, and uh, we record everything in house over at at, at uh, Jocko's, and. Uh, then we send it off to uh, Ken Herb, and uh, Ken Herb mix and masters it, you know. But, yeah, we're going to record some new stuff and, and, and get rolling again, you know. Cool. Start cool. smashing skulls again. Cool. Well, that's all the time we got, man. Thank you for having me, yeah, man. Yeah, I appreciate you coming down. It was excellent, man. We learned a lot. I think we all learned a lot here. This There's probably a conversation. so much more to tell. Well, you know what? We always have you back down here again when we think of more stuff to talk about. But yeah. It's cool, man. All right, and um, you could also catch you down there Sunday nights uh, once a month, Parma Pit Stop. You'll be down there for Terry's Jam Night. You go down there, and they can hang out with you. You're going to uh, be going to Butch Armstrong's um, Jam Night at the Sand Trap also. When that starts up, uh, you got a lot going on still on top of your busy other life. Oh, yeah, and the, the Killers will be, oh, we'll yeah. be playing shows this summer. And Fester will be playing shows. Yeah, so we got new music coming. Shows, yeah. We got so much stuff going on. Yeah, we'll here. have some new music. Both bands will have new music recorded. Okay. I try to solicit my brother into Brian to record us. Yeah, there you go. I love recording with Brian. I know he's busy, but <laughs> well, he could he could find time for you. Yeah. All right, guys, that's it from us, and we will see you guys next week. That'll be fine. <laughs>